email from Jean from Illinois. I tune into the journey home on occasion and can't figure out why people, especially pastors, are converting to the Catholic Church. Why don't they just stay in their own churches and be good Christians? I don't see how it really matters what church door you enter Sunday morning as long as you believe in Jesus. Oh boy. Um, I can't speak for anybody else but myself. Uh, again, even as a fundamentalist, my main allegiance was to the Bible. And I'm not, no longer that much of a fundamentalist, but, but I still have a little bit to, to the fact, point that some of my fellow Catholics think I'm still a fundamentalist. <laughs> um, but when I saw that the Bible pointed to the Catholic Church, and that there were huge portions of Scripture that make no sense whatsoever outside of the Catholic Church. Um, I, I had to consider the Catholic Church. Again, for me, it was being part of the one church that can trace itself back to Christ. And then you have the issue of the Eucharist. I mean, yes, I could have stayed a, a, an ordained Baptist minister and tried to manipulate and kind of work behind the scenes undercover, but I couldn't feed outside of the Catholic Church. I need the Eucharist. I need the body and blood of Christ. That is the source and summit of our faith. And without that, I don't have anything. Yeah. yeah. In that passage you mentioned, John 15, the verses 1 through 11, where it talks about the vine and the branches. And in the context of that, it's, it's calling us as a part of this body. Right. You know, the, 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 the vine. We're connected. It's in that context where Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Exactly. From a Baptist standpoint, how did you as a pastor help people understand how they're connected to Jesus to well, make sure they're not doing it on their own? Right. Again, it, it's, it's the idea of a spiritual communion, a spiritual union with Christ. Um, we always, even though we were very fundamentalist and, and sheltered, if you will, in our own little world, we believed that other people were saved. Okay, well, anyone in our view who was saved was part of the body of Christ. So we would explain the vine as being the body of Christ in general, and when you accept Jesus as your Savior, you become, you know, part of the vine. And even from a Catholic standpoint, to a certain extent, that's true, because we do believe that other Christians, by virtue of their baptism and their faith, right. are united, even if it's imperfectly, we believe they are united yeah. to Christ. So, um, you know, er, yeah. when, when, when we all get to heaven, we'll all be Catholic and everything. Well, where, are there, where are there questions? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where this hyper-ecumenism has crept in. It doesn't really matter where you go as long as you have Jesus. I mean, that's where she was. But she also asked this question about why not, she didn't understand my pastors particularly, <clears throat> Again, why can't you stay there? And, and I look back on that question for myself. The reason that I left the pastorate, the key reason was that I wasn't certain that what I was preaching was true. Right. Okay. But in the end, there's a lot of reasons why I became Catholic, but one of them was the necessity of the sacraments. Yes. And my guess is that, what about yourself in that, to seeing that even our good friends out there that love Jesus and they're good, faithful Baptists, the one thing I wish they had to make sure that they're not doing it on their own is the sacrament. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mentioned the Eucharist. That is right. the supreme sacrament. And, um, you know, the, the other six sacraments as well. Uh, of course, as fundamental Baptists, we didn't have sacraments. We didn't even call them sacraments. We called them ordinances because we didn't want to sound Catholic in any way, shape, or form. But the idea of, of sacraments, that there are physical things that can affect us spiritually, is something that's very alien to the fundamentalist mindset. But as I, again, as I studied scripture, I found exactly the opposite. I found the, the seven sacraments are rep, represented in scripture. And probably the best illustration of a sacrament, even though it wasn't a sac something that's sacramental, mm -hmm. would be Jesus' healing of the man born blind. Jesus didn't just touch him and say, be healed or say, you know, be healed, walk away. He stooped down, spat in the dirt, made mud, muddy clay, put it on his eyes and said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He used something very physical because, again, you have the creator who made man from the dust of the earth using that same dust to heal his broken creation. And that's what sacraments are. God uses something physical to heal us 
spiritually, but also sometimes physically as well. I even think about the first miracle in uh, the wedding at Cana. Mm. He didn't just produce wine out of nothing. He changed the water into mm. wine. Foot water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so he makes, he uses the physical. I mean, it's very, and we as Protestants kind of backed away from the right. physical of, of anything. Uh, again, I think it's a little bit of Neoplatonism here. Um, the idea, and, and you've heard this too, I'm yeah. sure, as an evangelical, that you have this huge chasm between us and God, between the spiritual and the physical, and there's this huge canyon, and Jesus is this bridge across the canyon. Well, this is one of the other things that made a big in influence on me, was a, another priest friend said, Jesus isn't a bridge, he's fill. He doesn't just bridge the chasm, he fills it in. <laughs> so the physical now can become channels of grace. All right. 